Google's helpful content update is here and people are pissed. People are upset and rightfully so, because listen, if your website goes down, this is not a vacuum. Another website's going to come up. And what are those websites? Do you know the websites that have increased? Quora and Reddit. These are UGC websites, user-generated content. Let's talk about Google's recent update, the helpful content update 2.0. This thing is insane. So our first stop brings us to Cyrus Shepard's tweet, Outlook India. Is this Google's Outlook India update? What does this even mean? Well, Outlook India is a big, big authoritative website where you can do true parasitic SEO. What does that mean? Well, let's just keep scrolling down here. See, can we call it the parasite update? Okay, yeah. So some people are saying, look, people are buying links on these websites, interlink and say 10 articles at once and selling a product because they don't want to build a website anymore. They want to do parasite SEO. They want to buy, basically buying web pages on other websites to rank higher. But I don't think that's it. Maybe a part of it, right? Maybe a small, small part of it. But I'm going to teach you in this video what I'm doing to hedge against these type of things. I have AI websites that have not been affected by the Google helpful content update. But first, let's check out this really good Twitter feed. I think you're going to like this. Ann Moss is an absolute juggernaut in this space. She has like 25 profitable niche websites. Unbelievable. Very, very authoritative voice here. Didn't take long. Next step, forums with plugins that create posts and entire discussions by bogus AI users. What she's saying is, okay, Google, if you're going to prefer Reddit and Quora, UGC stuff, well, there's going to be people who fake this, and they already are faking this. And then Ariel Phoenix, who I believe is a E, um, what do you call it? People who do um, Promatic SEO, PSEO, she's great. Actually, very easy to do that too. So she's chiming in saying, yeah, that's pretty darn easy. And here's John Mueller. Um, if you don't know John, he works for Google, right? To be direct, I don't see us rolling this update back. Also, none of this was done to spite anyone. We want to highlight fantastic, helpful, unique, compelling, people-first content in search. And we will continue to work on our algorithm to move in that direction. So a lot of people are angry because they put a lot of effort in their websites and made it EEAT friendly. They have unique images and it just, they're getting exploded 50% down. Your website lost 50% of its traffic. So people are rightfully mad because in place of these nice websites, we have things that are just, you know, PSEO, you know, bogus AI forums now. So you can read more and more and more here, but then they go on to give us examples of, oh, how is this better? So query, what is the red juice in steak? And so here's ranking number four, Quora, um, and it says blah, 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 irrelevant ad at top, ChatGPT answer that says it's actually blood, and it's not user-generated answer that doesn't answer the question at all. So people go on and on, and they're just going to give us more and more examples of how this rollout more or less really, really stinks. Now, this is the part of the video where I show you what I think might help. And listen, I do not know everything. No one does, and me especially. I'm learning more and more each day. This is bonsaimary.com. Um, this is a weird website, right? Because I bought it. Uh, I think it was $2,000 on um, the aged domain website, the real generic one. I forget the name of it. Nonetheless, I bought it. I recreated the URLs exactly how they were exactly. Everything was exact. And I didn't like the outcome and I let it die. I let it die for two months, two and a half months. And here we are. Everything here is AI content. And as you can see, we're doing pretty darn good. So why is this website, why was this website not affected? And I'll tell you, I think it has to do with the cost of retrieval. You might've heard that term thrown around, cost of retrieval. Think about it, right? If Google has a million, quadrillion, billion different things to crawl now because AI generated stuff, it's our obligation as website owners to make it easy on Google. And how I did this, this is the website right here, is pretty darn simple. Now look here, I'll give you a bird's eye view of what I have going on. This is how I track everything, like all the things down here, right? But philodendron, so this is bonsaimary.com. I need to talk about philodendron. It's a nice indoor plant guide, right? Well, let's look at the graph. All of these are AI created. We, we posted them in May, June, and we're doing pretty darn good, pretty darn good. But I want to show you what do these actually look like, right? So we have philodendron species care guides. Let's click into here. These are not sophisticated articles. In fact, some of them don't even have pictures because I was pretty darn lazy. But here's the point. Here's the point. We have like a million of them, not literally, but we have quite a few, well over 150. And because of that, if Google wants to know anything about any of these species, any species of philodendron, a care guide, they're going to get it right here. And that brings us to the idea of the article depth. 
I don't like going deeper than two. So you have the home page, you have things under that. Like how many clicks, how many literal clicks do I have to do from the home page to get to any of your articles online but it goes deeper than that it's a little bit more sophisticated lazy yes sophisticated somewhat the top ones white wizard care guide the ring of fire if i click in here to the ring of fire care guide we usually embed you know two youtube videos cool that's easy to do um, but you'll see these hyperlinks right here if i click on this hyperlink it goes to this right here oh my gosh not complicated not complicated at all so this is how i conceptualize it I have my care guides, all the philodendron care guides, and underneath of them, check this out, underneath of them, we have these, the philodendron questions. We have 33, call it 32 different questions right here. We can go into any of them that each and every care guide links down to. So it's a natural interlinking thing. I'm going to talk about every freaking philodendron in the planet if I can help it, right? And on top of that, I want to know the easiest way to interlink this. When you're doing auto blogging, when you have VAs that can pump out content, don't just send articles out there. And listen, I know a lot of people do this. A lot of people interlink and they have better content than this. So I don't have all the answers like I was saying, like, why did your website go down? I don't know. But we're using this as an example because we know this one's going up and not down. So maybe... We can learn something here. And like I was saying, this is the philodendron hub. This is another hub, right? It hasn't popped off like philodendron, syngonium. This is just another portion of the website. If we come up here, check this out. Syngonium, right? These are just different types of plants. Syngonium, there's no YouTube in this. But nonetheless, the point is, they're starting to trend up too. Syngonium hub and then the anthurium hub. These are just different types of plants. And when you show success, listen, this is so important. When you show success in one thing, just replicate it. Just turn the screw. Do it a million times. It doesn't matter. You'd be so surprised how much money people make online by just doing the same type of article over and over again, 100, 3, 5, 1,000 times. So before we jump off of here, off of Bonsai Mary, the About Us, I mean, this is what it looks like. Right for us, that's debatable even if you want to have it on the website. So I'm just looking around for EEAT. In need of specialty indoor planter bonsai. So I'm, you know, saying like, if you want to plant, contact us. In other words, that we provide a real service. So maybe this helps with EEAT. Maybe it helps Google trust us. But I really think because, look, I'm going to go to the sitemap right now. Because if we go to the sitemap right here and I do control, I have to click and post. If I do control F, fill O, dead, I have 136 articles. And you can see they're all replicated here. It's the same format over and over and over again. Literally every article follows the same exact format. And then we have the questions down here to back it up. If I go to Anthurium, you're gonna see you know something similar. There's 90 articles on Anthurium. Same idea. I can rinse and repeat this concept now with autoblogging like never before. Now I want to encourage you, listen, step one, don't panic, never panic. Don't get into your website, this is just my opinion, and start changing a million things without having a very solid game plan, right? So step number one, just like Hitchhiker's Guide, let me know if you like that book. I love that book, by the way. Don't panic. And then once you have cooled yourself down, right, everyone's gotten their anger out. And I kind of feel bad for John Mueller in a way because he always gets the flack from us. But nonetheless, that's a tangent. We don't need to talk about that. Step number two is look at your website objectively. Get all the emotions out. I know you spent time to go to that place and took unique pictures of that food there on the platter. But the reality is SEO has changed. The whole game has changed. There's artificial intelligence that can create better pictures than you can take on your camera. They would fool me. It would look better than that picture you took at the restaurant. It would be better to have the AI image in some respects than you spending time and money to go to the restaurant and having a real experience. It's crazy to say. Maybe you don't agree with me, but it's just a reality. On top of that, people used to say you need 500 blog posts to really start to turn and make a profit. Uh, it costs me a one hundredth of the amount of money in a fraction of the time to do what I used to do. A one hundredth, literally a one hundredth. It cost me a dollar. A dollar to create an article, maybe two dollars, that used to cost me three hundred dollars through writers. And if that's the case, that bar has been raised. Five hundred is, is blown out of the water. Objectively look at your website and say, is this going to cut it anymore? I have the ability to blanket a whole topic of philodendron. I can be the philodendron expert, even if there's one search on that on that query per month. Maybe it's going to show Google that you are the expert because you're the only one talking about that weird, obscure variety of philodendron that I asked ChatGPT to give me a list of like 300 of them. I'll talk about everything. It cost me a dollar particle. Why 
not. Now I'll leave you with this. Listen, this is so important. If your website tanked, if your website has 50% loss, 30% loss because of this update, don't freak out because it's easier to recover nowadays than ever. It's easier to use the knowledge that you have in your head to iterate, to iterate. The only way that you fail, in my opinion, in this whole space in any business is if you give up. Look inside of yourself, figure out what have you learned through this duration of working in SEO as a website owner, and maybe it's a side hustle, you can take that and you can iterate faster than ever before. You can use what's in your mind, make it a reality through the tools that we have nowadays. That's a good thing. So look for the silver line in here. There's more opportunity. I know it stinks, but hopefully that helps.